Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Patrick and today we're going to be talking about how to use the glow layer with your node materials. So let's jump right in. Now you may have seen this asset. Uh, this was released as part of our release video for 4.1. Uh, and what we wanted to do is create a couple of game assets that have some animated textures on them, some uh, particle systems, and we also tapped into the glow layer. Um, and as you may know, we've had the glow layer in uh, Babylon for a while, uh, and it's very easy to use with physically based uh, rendering materials, uh, PBR materials, uh, where you just enable a glow layer, have a, an emissive texture on your, your PBR asset, and then it just takes care of it. Um, there are a few more steps we have to go through with uh, node material, uh, but I wanted to break that down for you how we did it. So uh, quickly, let's jump into our docs first so we can see how uh, the mesh glow works normally. Um, so really, uh, you can see we've got a, a nice little uh, demo asset here that has a glow layer on it. Um, but really, the only thing you have to do is declare the glow layer first. Um, then you can give it an intensity. You can do things like set the texture size or the, the blur kernel size. Um, so you have a little bit of control over it. Uh, but really, it's it's super simple. You just declare it, uh, make sure you have an emissive texture on your PBR material, and uh, it takes care of it for you. Um, so the reason being is it knows that the emissive texture is the thing that it cares about, and so that's how uh, the glow layer works. Uh, with a uh, PBR material, or I'm sorry, a node material, it's a little bit different. And so I set this scene up uh, using the same asset, um, and I created a node material that has a uh, control on the emissive strength and then put an animation on it so we can see this flicker that's going on here. Um, but as you can tell, there's no glow layer that's that's working on this. And the reason being is that the glow layer doesn't know what part of the node material is supposed to be isolated out for glow. So there are a couple of things we have to do. So the first thing we have to do is we have to tell the, the glow layer that the mesh should use its own material to be uh, part of the glow layer. Um, and so uh, what I did here is uh, I quickly put this scene together. Um, I'm not going to go through all the code line by line. We're not going to write it you know, live here. Um, I'm just going to give an overview, but we will link the playground in the description below so that you can come back later, check out the code, uh, and go through the, the, the node material shader and really understand what's going on here. Uh, but this is just a quick overview. So um, the first thing to do here is uh, let me uncomment this line of code. Um, and what this is saying is to the glow layer, let the light mesh use its own material uh, uh, to be evaluated by the glow layer. So when I rerun this, you'll see uh, there is way too much going on here. The, the glow is super bright, and it's because it's using the, the final out of the material, which is base color and emissive together, uh, which is way too much. So um, the easiest way to, to describe how we separate out emission uh, and, and base color is to, to show you an example. So um, this is the, uh, the scene that's linked in the documentation, which is uh, that same asset with a glow layer. Um, and what I'm going to use is Spectre.js. Uh, and so I'm just going to open this up and hit record on the scene. And so we can break down the render and show you the steps that happen. So at the top here, we've got the final composite render. Um, and then as I scroll down here, you'll see the first thing we find is this emission layer. Um, and this is what the glow layer is actually rendering out. It's saying, okay, I have emission. Um, I have to go through a couple of passes to blur it out. Um, and then once I have my final blur, then I can go back and render the rest of the scene. So then we're rendering all the rest of the meshes. We're rendering the background. We render the ground, it's the ground plane itself. Um, and then this last step is a composite step where it takes the glow layer from that first step and, com and composites it over the rest of the, the scene. So again, the, the important first step, uh, let the glow layer render out its, its part, which is just the emission texture, and then render the rest of the scene and composite. So that's, those are the steps we have to go through. Um, so let me hop back to our scene. Um, and so as, as you can tell, this is too much. We have to do that isolation step. So let me open up our node material editor so that we can see our shader. And let me give us a little bit more room here so we can see what's going on. Um, zoom in a little bit. Uh, the top part here is just the vertex part of the shader. We don't care about that part. It's the default uh, that you would find in any node material default shader. Uh, the next part here is the textures. And these two textures I lifted from the, the, the um, GLTF as we loaded them in. 
Um, and so those are the exact same textures that are in the other asset. Um, and you can see I did a, a quick uh, add the two of them together. Um, and that step is just to uh, to have the the asset look like the one from the documentation. So I'm lurping between the added and the base color texture. Um, and so uh, basically the emissive strength is saying uh, is the, the value that I'm animating in code. And that is saying, uh, do I show just base color texture or do I show base color and emissive texture added together? Um, you can kind of walk through this. Uh, it's super self-explanatory what's going on. Um, but the important part is this glow mask. And the glow mask is how we mask out just the emission texture to hand it to the glow layer and then uh, go back and let the, the non-glow layer uh, base color be rendered. Um, and so the easiest way to show this is um, just to, to show you what's happening with the glow mask. So um, I'm just gonna rotate this cube up so that we can see straight on. This is what the, the base color texture is rendering. Um, if I change the glow mask to one, you can see this is exactly what happens. Uh, we isolate just the emission texture and everything else goes to black. And that's what we want. We want to be able to pass that just, just that emission texture with nothing else to the glow layer and then come back in a second pass, turn off the emission texture and just render the base color. Um, and so that's what this glow mask part of the shader is doing. Um, so let me close that down and then come back to the code because this next bit is uh, where we uh, uh, control the glow mask. And so we have two functions here. We have the on before render mesh to effect, which is the glow layer, um, where we set the glow mask value from the shader to one. And so that gives us just the emission and black everywhere else. Um, and then the next part is the on after render mesh to effect, which is post glow effect or glow layer effects. Um, and so then we set the glow mask back to zero, so we're showing the base color. So that's how we're doing those two steps. First, isolate for the glow layer with uh, on before render mesh to effect by setting our glow mask to one. And then on after render mesh effect, we go back to zero for our glow mask, and then that shows just the base color. And then the glow layer is then able to composite them successfully. So let me uh, run this so you can see what happens in the end. Um, and as you can see, we get it. Uh, we have our nice, uh, blue glow from the emission texture, um, and then everything else is just the, the base color texture. So um, that is basically all we have to do. Uh, it is a few more steps, and so uh, you will find that um, when you are rendering out to uh, a glow layer with um, uh, node material, you do have to have a few extra steps in there. We have to set up that mask so that we can isolate just the emission texture and then uh, just the base color texture so we can we can simulate the same thing as happening in the PBR render workflow. Um, so I hope this made some sense to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, and I hope you have fun playing with the glow layer. It's a lot of fun. And uh, we had uh, great success uh, using that uh, glow layer with a bunch of other uh, special effects and animations and the textures with no material. It was it was really cool to pull it all together. So we wanted to make sure that we shared out uh, the process for using the glow layer with enemy as well. So uh, I hope you have fun with it and take care.